Hello, I am Jamie Ballard of Cupcakes and Haystacks. I am a graphic designer and I love digital planners and journals too. So I create online courses and templates for other female creatives just like you so that you can create your own digital planners and sell them in your own online shops for passive income. Now I also have my own shop on Etsy. It's called Cupcakes and Haystacks as well. And I have been itching to put together some new autumn inspired designs to get in my shop for the season. Now, if you're like me, you love this time of year and you'd like to do the same, then you're gonna love this video because I'm gonna give you a little behind the scenes peek at how I put together the themes for my designs. If you like this type of content and you'd like to see more of it, make sure that you like this video and follow my channel. All right, now before I begin customizing any design, I like to put together a theme or what I like to call a branding kit. Inside of this branding kit, I'm going to have uh, any backgrounds that I'd like to use, paper textures, the patterns that I want for my covers and my dividers. I'll have my font pairing and um, any clip art and such that I'd like to use as well. So what I'd like to do is show you how I find all of those different things, where I find them, and then I'm going to, of course, put it all together in my little kit. Now, you are welcome to use the tips and such that I share with you as I move through this process so that you can create your own autumn-inspired uh, branding kit or if you really like the one that I've created here, I've actually dropped a link for it down within the description. So if you scroll down there, open up the description, you'll find a link. You can subscribe to my email list. And as soon as you subscribe, you'll instantly have access to this kit as well. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, now before I start picking out all of my different design assets that I want to add to this kit, I need to decide what it is that I'm even going to be creating or customizing. Um, for instance, if I am creating a digital journal or a digital notebook that's only intended to be used during the fall months, I have a lot of flexibility. Um, I can really niche down and embrace the season. I can add in pumpkins and fall leaves. I could even make something that's kind of like spooky inspired. However, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be customizing an entire yearly planner, which means I need to be a little bit more strategic because most people aren't going to want to purchase a digital planner like let's say in January um, that's going to be Halloween inspired because they're planning on using it all year round. So instead of focusing on like all of the pumpkins and the leaves and ghosts and spiders and all that kind of stuff, instead I'm going to be focusing on like a really warm autumn color palette. And I'll be intentional about um, picking out certain patterns and such like you see here that can be flexible through the whole year. I may add in a few little touches here you see like uh, these dried leaves and flowers. And I'll also be careful about my font pairings and find something that's a little bit cozy. Uh, those things can lend to that autumn feel without it screaming like it's fall time. <laughs> so that's what I'm going to be doing. Now I want to point out that uh, what I'm customizing here is what I call my dreamy dated digital planner templates. This is actually something that I created with one of my best friends, Michelle Simpkin, and it's available to you for purchase if you'd like as well. Um, it is, there's over 500, I think almost 600 pages. It's fully dated for the whole year. It's fully hyperlinked. They're both Monday and Sunday start dates. Um, it's absolutely customizable. You can change up. You can see the backgrounds, the tabs, um, the planner content. You can switch up, put in your own fonts. You can do just about anything with this. And um, you'll find a link for it down below in the description. And then also in the branding kit, I have a link for you. So if you want to dive into the whole world of digital planning, you don't want to start from scratch, you'd like it to be dated, and you want something that's very flexible, this is going to be a great option for you. But once you know what it is that you're going to be customizing, it's going to be time for us to start shopping. So let's go ahead and start at Creative Market. 
Now when it comes to selecting your different design elements, there are a lot of different platforms that you can do that on. My personal favorite is always Creative Market and that's for a handful of different reasons. The first is that they offer a really great commercial license. So when I purchase a product, I can select the commercial license and I know without a doubt that I'm going to be able to use that particular element within a design that I'm selling without any issues. Now you always do need to um, familiarize yourself with the terms of use for that particular license, but I know that for what I'm personally creating, I'm okay to use it. Another reason that I really love Creative Market is there are just so many search results available to you. Um, I could do a search and come up with several hundred thousand different results. Now while that can be overwhelming, as long as you are strategic with your keywords, it's really helpful. So the first thing that I'm going to do a search for is going to be my pattern. Now my patterns I like to use to fill my dividers, sometimes my covers as well, and I find that it's a really good foundation because that's where I'm going to draw my color palette um, and I'll be able to match everything else to it. We always need like one little anchor that we are connecting everything else to if we're going to have a cohesive design. And for me, that's my pattern. So I'm gonna come on up here to my search words and I'm going to put in, let's do autumn, floral. Now the reason why I'm tagging on floral to the end is because I have a feeling that if I just do autumn it's going to be like all pumpkins all leaves but we've already determined that I need to be um, a little bit more careful with it because I want to find um, a pattern or a pattern bundle that's going to be able to be used all year round. If I'm focusing on the floral part then chances are I'm going to have a little bit better results. All right, so here we go. You can see that there are a few pumpkins and stuff scattered in here, which is to be expected. But because I have autumn, um, I really like the color palettes that are coming up here. Those are definitely the colors that I'm looking for. And there are quite a few florals. And typically I'll do a search through a few pages. If I don't find anything that I like, then I'll switch to different keywords. I do like this one. And you can see that there are quite a few patterns here and they are all super cute. But before I absolutely fall in love with something, I always want to look to see what the price is with the commercial license. So with commercial um, selected, you can see it's $62 for the set, which I'm sure that this is a fabulous set. This is probably more than double of what I expect to spend on my patterns. You can spend as much or as little as you want, but I'm not comfortable with this price range. So I'm going to go back and I'm gonna keep looking. This one's kinda of cute. I really like these mushrooms. I feel like maybe the rest of the patterns though for the most part are just a little bit too fall for my taste. This one's cute too, but besides those mushrooms I don't think that I would want to um, decorate or customize an entire yearly digital planner with the other patterns. So I'm going to go back here off of this one as well. Okay, so this is one that I already have that I actually forgot that I have. <laughs> so I should probably go back and make use of it. This one, again, is probably just a little bit more fall than what I want. Um, let's see what's in here. But I'm definitely going to have to revisit it for maybe um, a journal or a notebook, something along those lines. Yeah, I remember. I really love this pattern. So I'm going to have to open this up again and use that for something go back. Oops. All right, so I'm going to do a little bit different keywords here. So those first patterns that I looked at, I noticed that boho was in the title. And so that makes me think that maybe if I use that keyword, I'll get a little bit closer to what I'm looking for. So instead of um, autumn floral, let's try boho autumn. And 
look, that same one that I mentioned came up here. So I might be on the right track. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. Okay, let's take, first let's look at the price. <laughs> so it's 26 for the commercial license, which is much more realistic um, in my opinion. And let's see here. There are 37 different patterns. And that is a really great point for me because it makes me feel more comfortable about purchasing a bundle that's even just $26 because I'm not going to be using 37 different patterns throughout my um, entire digital planner, which means that I'm going to be able to create an entire series of digital planners, notebooks, journals, and such using this one, um, this one bundle without repeating any patterns. So let's take a little bit closer look at all of these images. So you can see that they all have like that autumn uh, color palette and a lot of the flowers could even be passed off as kind of like fall-like flowers. But it doesn't, but I feel really comfortable using any of these patterns for the entire year. And I think that I could make a really cute digital planner out of this if I'm picking out the right color palettes and fonts and such to go with it. See how cute those are all layered? I really like this. Okay, so let's go back because there's a couple other things that I need to look for. I need to make sure, you can see here, that it's a 300 DPI. That's really important. Anything less than a 300 DPI is going to start to become pixelated once you bring it into your design, especially if once you add it and you deliver it to your customers, when they're zooming in on their pages, um, the images that they see are not going to be clear. Let's see what else this tells us about. All right, so there are 30 seamless patterns and they are available in both AI, JPEG, and PNG. This is really nice if you are someone who has a program like um, Adobe Illustrator and you're experienced with it. If you find a pattern that you really like, but perhaps the colors aren't just right, you could go in there and you could change up the colors and such of it in most cases. But what I'm looking for is I really want to make sure that there are PNGs, okay? And the pixel size is 5,000 by 5,000, which is important to me because my digital planner, the width of it is um, right around 2,500-ish. So I know that this is going to be plenty big enough to fill my dividers and my covers and that type of thing. And so this, I think, has everything that I need. So this is going to be probably the pattern bundle that I use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and purchase, I'm going to download, and I'm also going to provide you with the link for this particular bundle if you love it too. It's going to be within the branding kit. And so then you can download it if you like as well. And now let's move on to our next step. All right, so we have our pattern. Um, that's the foundation, so the biggest part of this brand kit is done. Now we're just kind of finding little things that are going to complement that particular design. Uh, I think what I want to do is I want to find a background that I'm going to use. Uh, a lot of times I favor a wood background or cork sometimes. Uh, sometimes I'll use marble. Because I want this to be like a very warm design, I'm probably going to use a wood background. So let's go ahead and type in real wood background. Now the reason why I'm typing in real wood is because sometimes if you don't, what you're going to get is um, just kind of like texture overlays. And this I don't think is going to work for me. So let's just try real wood pattern. Ooh, let's look at this. Let's see what we have here. These are pretty. I like that there's some options with some funky colors. 
I probably wouldn't use the funky colors for this particular design, but I might for some others. I like that there are the different options as far as a style of wood. It makes it just a little bit different from the others that are out there. I want to zoom in because it looks like some of these may be actual illustration illustrations and not physical wood, which is okay as long as it looks realistic. So this might be a good option. I really like this a lot. Alright, so let's go back and learn a little bit more about this. The dimensions are 5,000 by 5,000. There's 300 DPI, so I know that the size and such is appropriate. And let's see here. For the commercial, it's $12, which isn't too bad because we have 22 different um, files. It's available in Illustrator as well as JPEG and then PNG files with seamless patterns. So this one I think would be a really good option. Um, I already have a set that actually, I don't think that it's for sale anymore, but if I didn't have that to rely on for this project, this would probably one be one that I would be tempted to grab. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to provide a link in here for you. to give you the option to snag that up if you'd like. All right, so then let's take a look at our next step. All right, so now I want to find a really great paper texture bundle, and this is going to be used for a lot of different things within my design. Of course, I can use the paper texture to kind of spice up my white planning pages to just um, give them, they'll have like those little flecks of, um, of color in them that make them look like real paper. Um, but I can also take these textures and I can merge them together with my patterns to make it so that my dividers and my covers and such look like they're real paper as well. Now that's not something I'm going to show you how to do within this video, but it is something that I teach within my digital planner toolkit. So if you're interested in learning all of my design hacks when it comes to doing those types of things, I'll have that linked for you down below as well. But I can show you the particular bundles that I like to use. So I'm going to come on up here and let's type in white paper texture. Now some people like to get all different colors of paper texture, but because I have a program like Photoshop that allows me to merge them together, I prefer to stick with white paper because I think it's more flexible for my designs, and then I can reuse the bundle over and over again for all my different projects. And there's one in particular that I'm looking for that I love. So you'll see there are a lot of different options available to you, and you can do things like this over here um, if you would like it to be colored, pre-colored for you but I'm going to click on this one. All right, so it looks at first glance that maybe this is colored paper, but this is actually just an example of how you can use the different textures, merge it with color, um, with clip art and such, and get these really cool effects. So let's take a look at what the papers actually look like. All right, so we have, I think it's a, yeah, a set of 12 subtle tape papers. So this is the first six and then the second six. And these are all really great. I use them in every single project that I create. And then we have more of the creamy papers here. And then one of the things I really love about this bundle is there are um, craft paper and cardboard options too, which I end up using quite a bit within my designs. Here's just more examples of how the textures look when merged with other things. So this is a really great option for you and you can see that it comes in JPEGs, um, it's available for um, Photoshop and for Illustrator. So uh, if you're looking for a paper bundle, 
This is my personal favorite, but like I said, there are a ton of different options, so feel free to explore. But I will link this particular bundle for you within the kit, all right? So now we have decided on our pattern. We have our background. We have some really great paper texture. And now I want to take a look at fonts. All right, so fonts are one of my favorite favorite things when it comes to design. I love typography and I can get lost in looking for fonts for days and I'm not exaggerating. So sometimes I have to put time limit limits down for myself um, but because I love them so much and I can scroll and scroll and scroll just like with the patterns I need to be really careful to make sure that I'm using keywords so that I'm not just going off on this tangent and I'm actually finding fonts that are going to match my product. So a lot of times I'll use a very similar um, keywords when it comes to my fonts as I do my patterns and my graphics and everything. So I'm going to type in, let's see here, let's just do autumn fonts and see what we get. So I'm looking for something that's going to be kind of fun. Um, I don't want it to be too serious. I feel like my patterns, they're cute. But if I don't have a fun, kind of whimsical font, that um, my patterns might become too serious. And that's just not my jam. So I do want to make sure that the overall design is just like very cute, very charming, very cozy. So I'm going to be keeping my out, eye out for something like that. Something like that's kind of cute, but it might be a little bit hard to read depending depending on how I use it. A lot of times I like fonts that look um, kind of handwritten as well. That's super cute. But I feel like it's not quite the vibe I'm going for. This is a cute one. Oh my gosh. I don't know how it gets any more perfect than this. It's actually called Cozy. Let's take a look at this one here. Now I don't feel bad usually for purchasing fonts because I can use them across all of my platforms in a ton of different projects. So in this one, um, I'm I will be purchasing a desktop version. So I know that there are a lot of different options and sometimes people get confused when it comes to picking out a specific um, font uh, file, like knowing which one that they need to use. And when it comes to creating digital planners, because the digital planners, they are not an ebook, they aren't an app, it's not a website, you are creating a finished PDF document, which means that desktop is always going to be the most appropriate option, which is perfect because it's usually the lesser expensive option as well. And you can see here that this one is only 12 bucks. So because I know I'm going to be using a lot, I wouldn't feel bad about paying that. And... And you'll find too that once you um, really dive into investing in all of these different elements, uh, it could be that you may not need to keep revisiting Creative Market all that much. Um, for the most part, I have a huge library of fonts, so I have something available to me for just about any type of product um, that I could ever use. I probably don't need to buy a font, but like I said, I love them, so I'm going to. But when you're first starting out creating your digital planners, it may take you a little bit of money to kind of get that little um, hoard of assets together. But once you have that, uh, you're not going to be throwing too much money into uh, your projects if you don't want to. All right, so let's take a look at exactly what this looks like. There's a couple things I need to pay attention to. I really like the lowercase, how it looks like when it's lowercase. And I want to see what it looks like when it's all caps as well, just like this. And I can see that I really like it when it's all caps because some of my headings and stuff, I do like to make it so that it's all cap or all lowercase. So you need to make sure you like both options. I need to make sure that there are numbers included and that there are characters. It's not uncommon to purchase one of these like 
um, custom fonts on a platform like Creative Market and they not have characters with it. So then you're very limited on what you can actually use the font for. So I do want to make sure that the most important ones are there and they are. And I just really love this one. I feel like it's going to make my design very cozy and very cute. So I'm happy this w with this one. If you like it, I'll also make sure to link this for you as well. And then what I'll do is within my design, so I have this really fun kind of funky font, and I will pair it with just a very simple, easy to read font um, so that I can use this particular font for all of my headings and subheadings, but then I can use a very easy to read simple font um, for uh, like full sentences, for maybe really tiny writing, for um, perhaps the numbers and such within my design. In that one, I don't really feel like I need to buy it. It doesn't need to be anything special, but I will have one linked for you within the kit that I feel will uh, complement this particular design, and that one will be a free one for you to download. All right, so we have our background, we have our patterns, we have our paper texture, we have our font, and um, if you want to, you could grab some clip art. I believe with this particular bundle, there is some clip art included. I don't typically uh, use illustrated clip art all that much in my design, but if that's something that you're looking for, it is included within that bundle. Now there's just one last thing I want to look at because I like to include um, real life uh, objects within my design. Like if you remember on the cover and some of the pages, I had those dried flowers. So let's see if we can find some really cute autumn real life elements that we can add to our designs as well. All right. So this, since this is going to be autumn inspired, but I don't want it to be so niche down that it can't be used all year round. When it comes to bringing in real life elements, I need to be careful just like with everything else. So um, typically when you are looking for real life elements to bring into your design, you want them to be um, flat lay, which means that um, since your digital planner is going to be sitting on a desktop, um, it is laid out flat on that desktop. So anytime you're looking for something that's flat lay, that means that you're expecting to be able to look down onto the top of it, if that makes sense. Um, I find that I find the best flat lay objects when I'm doing searches for scene creators. For example, let's put this in here and just type in scene creator. So then you can see um, you see how it's flat lay? We are looking down at the top of the desk with all of these objects. But in order for me to get exactly what it is that I'm looking for, I need to, of course, narrow down my search. A lot of times I will do um, like floral scene creators. And then we're going to get a lot of flower options. But I want to narrow this down even more um, because I don't want to have like spring flowers and such. I probably want to do dried flowers for this project. So I'm going to come up here and we will do dried floral scene creator. Let's see what we get with this. So you can see here we get a whole lot of options and I really love these options. Let's take a look. See this is, might be one that I would use if I was just doing like a notebook or a journal for just the fall months, but I want it to be a little bit more flexible. So I'm going to come up here to the pressed flowers. And let's see, it's 25 for the commercial. Now the flat lay stuff um, and the scene creators typically are going to be more expensive because it's more work for the creator, honestly, to put in a lot of times. Most times there's going to be drop shadows and everything attached to them for you. Um, but for these, I don't mind spending a little bit more money on as long as it's a high quality product. So this would be 25 here. And... The file size, let's see here. Okay, the dimensions are 2333 by 3500. It's plenty big enough. Um, the DPI is 300. Now the next thing that I need to pay attention to is a lot of these scene creators, they are going to be created for a specific program, like maybe Photoshop. If you don't plan on using Photoshop, then definitely 
do not do that. You need to make sure that there are PNGs, okay? So let's see here. We want to do show more. Let's see. I don't see if it's PNGs here. But another thing with Creative Market is usually you can preview the files. Okay, so you can see here that there are a total of 65 PNGs. So I know that they are in PNG format. Now the reason why it needs to be PNG versus JPEG is the PNG is going to have a transparent background. If you are purchasing JPEGs, they are going to have a white or a colored background and then you're not gonna be able to lay them on your project. It has to be PNGs for this. When it comes to your patterns and such, you can go either um, PNGs or you can do JPEGs, but for these elements, it needs to be PNGs. It's the same with your clip art. All right, so this is a really great one. Let's take a look at all the different images. So you can see here that there's some normal, some like colorful flowers and such, but because they're dried, um, they can kind of give us that fall look. These are really sweet, these yellow flowers here. So this is a really great option and I'll make sure to link this for you as well, okay? So now we have all of the things that we need, the elements for the design. Probably the last thing that needs to be done is a color palette needs to be created off of the patterns. And I've actually already put together a really beautiful color palette for you um, that's going to complement the patterns that we picked out. And that is going to be available to you within the branding kit that you can download down in the description as well. But let's head over to, um, to Canva and I'll show you what that color palette looks like. All right, so when you click the link below in the description and you open up your branding kit, this is what you can expect to find, except it's going to be in a PDF format. You won't be opening it within Canva. All right, so we have our terms of use. Um, there's an opportunity for you to rewatch this video if you need to for instruction. Uh, I've highlighted the different patterns, some of my favorite ones that are included in this bundle. And then we have our color palette and our font pairing. And what I wanna do is show you how I got this color palette. All right, so I'm gonna come back up here to where my patterns are and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Oh, actually, I'm gonna come down here first because I have some little, circle frames ready to go. I'm gonna copy these and set them right here on top of my patterns, okay? Now, if you are not sure where to find these circle frames, all you need to do is come on over here to Elements, and you'll just scroll down until you find frames. Find a circle one and just put it and resize it wherever you'd like. All right, so now I'm gonna click on just one of these frames. I'm going to come up here and click on this color box. And I'm gonna scroll all the way down until I find the colors that are provided for me um, that Canva has already pulled from these patterns. And I'm just going to select a variety of them that I like. I know I want a darker brown color that I'm definitely going to use probably for my text um, for a few other things. Probably definitely use this for at least the text on my tabs. I wanna make sure that I have a really light neutral color. So we'll get that as well. And I like this yellow, so I'll click on another circle and I'll select my yellow. And let's see what else here. I think I want this, um, perhaps this brown, brownish, orangish color. And let's grab this and what other color maybe this one here so this one is probably going to be a little bit different than what I have down below yeah just a little bit different but that's how I select those colors okay and I'm probably not going to use all of these colors um, Typically, when I am using these colors, I'm only going to be using my neutral, my darker color, and then maybe two of the other colors, but this gives me options. So when I start bringing my design together, if I find that I don't really care for this red color, for like my color blocks and such, I can be like, eh, not a fan, let me try this color. I know it's going to match my pattern, so let's just see what it does. And um, 
it's just a really good way to uh, have a backup in case my original plan doesn't turn out quite the way I wanted it to. We want to be careful not to bring in too many colors um, because when we do that our design starts to get kind of chaotic and of course depending on which specific patterns you settle on it could be that one of the colors um, that's available to you uh, that Canva offered up may not quite go with that particular pattern. But then once I have the colors that I need, let's come back down here. What I do is I make sure that I have the hex code available. This hex code is gonna make it super easy for you to change up your colors no matter what program you're using, whether it's Keynote, Affinity Publisher. I know that some of you create your digital planners within InDesign and it is way easier to just put in a hex code than it is to have to use your color picker or just kind of guess at the colors. So if you want to get the hex code, all you need to do is click on the colored circle. You'll click on the box up here You'll click on whatever color is highlighted, or you can just click on this colored box with the plus mark. You'll copy that hex code, and then you'll add it to a text box with a corresponding circle, okay? And that's all it takes to do your color palette. It's actually really easy to do, like I said, once you have the patterns and such in order to pull from it. And yeah, this is what you can expect to receive within your branding kit and then you'll see on the very last page I have all of these buttons that are going to take you they'll be clickable within the PDF uh, document that'll take you to the different um, the different products that I have selected. I will point out that these are going to be affiliate links, which means that I may receive a commission if you use one of them. Not all of these are affiliate links. Some of them are free products. But if you have any questions about how this works um, or just about branding kits in general, you're welcome to pop them in the video below. I hope that you found this to be useful and that you love this kit. I am excited to create. How about we pop over one more time just so that now you've seen all of the different pieces, um, just a refresher on what it looks like when everything is all put together. So these are all patterns, and this is the font that we chose, but all of the things that you see here, um, for the most part, were within the elements that I've laid out for you within this kit. And you can see that it put together, in my opinion, I. I understand I'm biased, but a very cute design that I am excited to use and to provide to my customers within my Etsy shop. So if you love this video, if you'd like to see more branding kits like this in the future, I'll be throwing them out there. Um, some will be seasonal, some will just be fun stuff that I'm feeling like creating, but make sure that you like this video and that you follow my channel. I hope you have a great day.